Poe Bronson, a uh, prolific author, written many books about many different subjects. Where did you get your creativity, or where do you get your creativity? Well, uh, a few lucky things happened when I was young, and people said, oh, you're very creative, and I developed a little bit of that temperament, and I was soon aware that I wasn't, you know, for the straight and narrow type of world. But, you know, that was just a precursor. Once I started writing seriously, what it comes down to is every single day going to the office and having to make something up from scratch, come up with something new day after day after day. And it's the repeated practice of that over 15 years that sort of enhanced and driven my creativity. And, and I would say that, in fact, uh, one of the ways that I sort of continue to nurture my creativity is to avoid anything that would give me comfort or a salary that could mean I didn't have to every day after day come up with ideas, generate ideas. So if I took a job on a college campus, say teaching writing, and then just did my own writing as a side project, you know, if I didn't, I didn't have to come up with ideas, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to uh, work, be as creative as I can. You just come up with an explanation of why academics are so boring. Yeah, perhaps so. Yeah, uh, and you've also introduced a, a sort of a new spin on the Protestant ethic. You're suggesting that your Protestant ethic actually made you creative. So you're very much in the American tradition. Yeah. Well, um, uh, growing up, um, my mom had a boyfriend, and he was a writer. But he was the kind of writer who romanticized the life of a writer to an extreme. And he, he, he only wanted to write for one magazine, and he mailed his stuff off. And he would, he, he, any other magazine was inferior. This was the New Yorker. And you know, then they never published his stuff. And, and he glorified it. And, and uh, I, when I grew up, I saw that kind of thing. And I never wanted to have that sort of gratuitous writing temperament. I went, when I came out of college, I had jobs, I worked jobs, I understood you have to work at things. And, you know, even back in college, I was, and in high school, I got bad grades on anything that required me to write. So I knew that my writing skills were because I had worked on them, not because I was ever given this, this a talent, really. Uh, and the result is um, a mindset about s studious practice, devoted practice, and that's necessary to success. Your work and your theories are all rooted on the premise that creativity is scarce. Could you ever imagine a world where creativity was abundant, a cornucopia of creativity? Yeah, well, this is a good question because in theory, if we nurture children's act creativity with new curriculum and new style of teaching, and they were all far more creative, uh, and then everybody was celebrating new ideas, and everywhere was sort of Silicon Valley. Um, you know, what would the world look like, and and would it be a better place? I would think it would be a better place. Uh, do I think everybody could do that? Uh, unfortunately, people still compare themselves when they want to be creative. They censor themselves because they compare themselves to what they see as experts or excellence or creative geniuses, and because they think I'm not as good as that person they shut their creativity down. And that's an inherent process. And in a competitive world, that's never going to stop. You're never going to see people uh, stop shutting themselves down because they're not as creative as some of their ideals. Are we ever going to see drugs that provide people with creativity? Well, what's interesting is that uh, a lot of people, you know, the drug of choice on college campuses is Adderall. And uh, people will report, you know, look, uh, I got the paper done because I took Adderall, but it wasn't a really creative paper. Uh, actually, Adderall boosts creativity for those people who aren't normally that creative. And it doesn't really boost the creative parts of their brain as much as it boosts just cognitive functioning in general and their tension systems and their intelligence kind of goes up. It's for highly creative people, uh, Adderall defeats their creativity. So you see a U-shaped curve. Intelligence and creativity correlate up to an IQ of about 116. They have no correlation above that. So perhaps it's no coincidence that Silicon Valley was born in the counterculture of the 60s when many people were taking many different kinds of narcotics. You know, it's interesting. Uh, if you go back to the history of, say, venture capital and the capital flows, you know, there was, it was a parallel track to the counterculture 
but the people who provided money to Silicon Valley, uh, they were just trying to break the country club mold. They weren't taking LSD, right? And they were, whether they were bankers here or, you know, on the lunch hour in San Francisco or the early venture capitalists, you know, they weren't into drugs and that kind of thing. It was more of a parallel track. And their, their, their idea was just, you know, don't live a boring life. Don't do the same old thing. You know, break the country club culture. Uh, but some of the people they founded were people who came out of that counterculture. Makes sense. Thank you.